Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. Welcome back to a new series of CCNA 200-125 5-Minute Video Boot Camps. This one is an illustrated introduction to HSRP. Now if you're taking the two exam path to your CCNA success, this is going to be on your second exam. It's an ICND2 topic. It's a topic that gets overlooked quite often in CCNA studies. We are going to take care of that with a couple of five-minute video boot camps. This one just showing you what HSRP is all about. I'll also have some video practice exams for you as well. So let's go ahead and start our little five-minute timer here and see what the heck is going on with HSRP. This is a situation, you know, a common situation, where you've got, say, 46 hosts connected to a switch, or however many, the number of hosts doesn't matter, but they're all using the same IP address as their default gateway, 10.1.1.24 here, which is Router 1's fast Ethernet interface. Now, we also have another router that they could use to get to the outside world over at Router 2, and that's fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 at 10.1.1.2.24. So the thing is, we've got all of our hosts pointing to one default gateway, and this leads to something we are always trying to avoid in networking, and that is the single point of failure. You know, we love redundancy. We love all the backups that we can get. And here we have two routers that the host could be using to get to the outside world and use as their default gateway, but they're all using the same one. So, of course, you already see what the problem could be here. What happens when router one goes poof? What happens when something happens to that interface or something happens to the power supply or something happens to router one? Well, right now we've got 46 hosts that are SOL. You know, they're sure out of luck because their default gateway has gone down. And what now? What could we do to make router two step in? Maybe we could use HSRP. Maybe we could do something like this instead though. Maybe we're going to go to the host and say, okay, we want 23 of them using 10.1.1.1 as the default gateway, and the other 23 can use 10.1.1.2 as their default gateway. Well, we're going to do a little something like this in another video in this series. It's called HSRP Load Balancing. But you also see what the issue here would be, because we're not running HSRP yet, what happens when one of these routers goes away. Then we've got a bit of an issue. We're going to talk about that in just a second. I do want to thank every single one of you who's purchased my Binary Subnetting and Summarization Mastery book out on Amazon. It's my first new book in a while. It's not going to be my last one. My CSENT and CCNA books are right behind. But it debuted at number one at the, on Amazon in the Cisco Certification Guide, and I thank you for making that happen. If you don't have your copy yet, when you're done with this video, head over to bit.ly slash bulldog subnetting. And if you're not familiar with bit.ly, it's just a link shortener. It's going to take you to the Amazon page page, which has about 9,000 characters in the URL, and you can check that out and grab your copy. If you buy the hard copy first, you can then go back and get the soft copy for just 99 cents, and then you can read it anywhere because you can use the Kindle app anywhere to read that book. So check that out when you're done. But let's go back to this situation where these hosts are, you know, we've split the load, so to speak. We're using 23 hosts are using 10.1.1.1 as the default gateway, the other 23 using 10.1.1.2. Well, we still have a problem. It's not going to affect as many hosts, but still, if router one goes poof, then we've got a real problem for those 23 hosts using 10.1.1 as the default gateway. So this is where the hot standby routing protocol, or HSRP, comes in, because the hot standby part is that another router is going to be ready to step in as the default gateway if the primary one goes down. And here's how we're going to make that happen. It's really interesting. We're going to create an, a virtual router or an HSRP language, a pseudo router. And if this sounds complicated, believe me, when we're configuring it in the next video, uh, you'll see it's very straightforward. But what you're going to do is give that virtual router an IP address from the same subnet as your two physical routers. And we see that that is 10110 slash 24. So here I would give it an address of 101100 slash 24. Notice that I've got a question mark next to the Mac. We're going to come back to that, but right now we are just concentrating on that IP address. And what you do here is that all hosts should use the virtual router's IP address as their default gateway. So we would configure the host to use 10.1.1.100. So what happens then 
is that the hosts think the data is going to their default gateway at 10 1, 1, 100, and frankly, the hosts really don't care. You know, the hosts just want the data to get where it's going. So the hosts think that it's going to the virtual router, but where the data is actually going is one of the physical routers and what we're going to configure it as an HSRP router group. So let's assume here that all the data is going to 10.1.1.1. All the hosts are actually sending their data there. Well, with HSRP enabled, what happens is, and I'm going to pause this for just a second, we're on right at five minutes. If router one goes poof, then the standby router in the HSRP group will take over when the active router, a technical term here, goes poof. So that's what's going on with HSRP. And you'll see the configs are very simple as usual. There are some rules that we have to have down cold for our exam, but we will take care of that in the next five minute video bootcamp, which I'm going to post on March 1st, 2019. I'm Chris Bryant. Thanks again for watching today's video bootcamp, and I will see you tomorrow as we continue our look at HSRP.